getting right into it. Today, I'm gonna teach you how I made myself a beauteous 3D mask to keep away germs, viruses, and to ensure that people socially distance from you because you're scary looking. Not like you as a person, but when you're wearing the mask, like it's a scary mask, I hope. It's supposed to be scary, it's just kind of goofy, I don't know. I'm gonna teach you how I made that mask in the thumbnail. You saw it, because you clicked on the video, which means you already know what it looks like, spoilers. And while I explain how I made it, I am also going to be doing my beauty makeup to coordinate with my scary monster mask. I was saying to Anthony the other day that it's really strange when you come face to face with someone out in the world now and they're not wearing a mask. I guess it depends if, one, if you're in the United States because I think some countries are actually getting past this virus, whereas the United States is just, we're taking our time. But at least here in California, in Los Angeles, I feel very strange when I come face to face with someone who's not wearing a mask. You know, like if you're talking to someone and then all of a sudden it's like, or it's like, does anyone do this? No one does this, right? No. Maybe it, <laughs> no. I don't know. Or people do this, they do the chin strap. It freaks me out. I don't wanna get into the politics of wearing a mask, okay? That's not what this video was meant for, but it freaks me out that a lot of people are still choosing to not wear a mask. Therefore, we will all be dealing with the consequences of this virus longer than if we just sucked it up and wore a mask and stayed inside. Till 2025, baby. <sighs> Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I don't see mask wearing going away anytime soon. I think people are starting to accept that mask wearing is gonna be a part of their lives. And now we're seeing brands releasing cute masks. Everything from Etsy shops to like high-end ritzy, you know, what's that one called? Gucky? There've been a lot of sewing tutorials that I've seen going around on how you can make your own mask out of pattern fabric that you like. Luckily, I had already had plain black masks from before the pandemic, cause I'm paranoid. At first I didn't want to embrace the cute mask thing because embracing it would have felt to me like accepting the idea that this thing was going to be around for a long time. And I think I truly wanted to believe that it wasn't going to be. But I should have known that we would politicize wearing a mask, so <laughs> here we are. How long has it been? March? What's today? Wow, this is the longest four months of my life. I actually thought it was longer. It's Groundhog's Day, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Drink every time I say, I think. I think, I think, I think, I think. I think my nose itches. Which, by the way, you guys called me out in the last video. You're right. If I'm touching my brush and then I'm itching my nose with my brush. That doesn't work. That doesn't protect me from germs. You're completely correct. Two videos in a row now that I just can't stop thinking about our scary reality. I started to look up horror themed masks because I just love horror themed things. I have a lot of horror themed shirts. I began to collect and wear in last year's ghost hunting adventures. <laughs> I'm actually really sad. Which by the way, are obviously not gonna happen this year because it's not safe to be hopping on a plane several times in the span of a couple months, unless I absolutely have to. So I guess I do not have to hunt the ghosts. But alas, I'll have to do it whenever the pandemic is over. I will do it whenever the pandemic is over. I really, really enjoyed it. In any case, I was looking up horror masks because I wanted maybe like a shining themed mask. Actually, it started because I was wondering if anyone had made a Jason mask or a Hannibal Lecter mask because it would convert into a half face mask so easily. And I found some cute ones. And then I saw ones that looked like little monster faces on the bottom half that were like printed on a mask. And I thought about that one mask I saw that an FX artist had made. This one, you know the one. It was going around the world. And that is the moment that I realized I would really, really love to build myself a 3D scary FX pandemic mask. And here we are. Am I in focus? It's so shallow that I might mess it up. Sorry. Wanna get Gonna get replay, it's about time for creature arrival. Not my best. One thing I've learned in the pandemic is that all I freaking do is get reminded of songs and then I turn them into ballads about my children, Ripley and Creature. Sometimes my improv is real good. Improv freestyle? Sometimes my freestyle is real good. Sometimes not so much. My most common rhymes are girl, squirrel, dog, frog, pollywog. That's actually one of my common rhymes. Can you confirm? Absolutely. <laughs> Challenge me with a song. I'll try to make a dog song. A whole new world. I was singing that earlier. A whole new squirrel. <laughs> this Ripley reminds me of a squirrel. She looks like the squirrel from Ice Age, especially when she's like fighting creature. This looks real wonky. Usually if I sing about creature, I'm singing about something that has to do with poop. <laughs> it's an unfortunate truth. God, he really just is the poop king though. <laughs> we don't need to talk about this anymore. No, this is all getting cut out, I hope. What am I doing on my eyes? I'm not even sure. 
one day I'm gonna tell you how to make this mask, but not yet. You gotta wait for it, you gotta work for it. Oh, Creature just sighed at me like I'm taking too long. Sorry, Prince. Prince Creature. Creature, Creature, where'd you get those features? Creature, Creature, why are you playing in boob? <laughs> usually goes like that, something like that. <laughs> Am I right? That, that is usually how it goes. Well, I used pink and orange in my monster. Yeah, I made the monster pink. You saw that in the thumbnail. It's weird, isn't it? We'll talk about it. We'll get there. I want to use the pink in Christie's new palette. This is coveted because she broke the internet with it. And I'm lucky enough to have one. Thank you, Christy. Look how cool this is. It's just double-sided. Whoa. So I want to use side effect for sure. I want to use am I orange for sure. Orange, yeah. Don't. You're new here. Don't. I'll do pink and orange within one eye. That's what I'm going to do. You know what? It's been a while. I wanna do that tape thing. I always worry that I'm gonna get the projection wrong here though, or one side's gonna be different than the other. It's really gonna mess me up. That feels right. That feels right in my bones. And if it's not, we're gonna find out about it later. Look guys, I did my hair for you today. Are you impressed? I'm impressed. So, this mask, let's talk about it. My inspo for the mask was basically my Yeti tutorial. If you guys have been around for a while or if you've been going back in the Glam and Gore vault, I realized that the Yeti mask would make a perfect half mask. So the first thing I did is I used my life cast and I sculpted with clay directly onto it. So you kind of need a life cast to do it, but you could also just use the bottom half of a mannequin head, like a styrofoam mannequin head. It would get the job done, but it would be harder. I sculpted directly onto it to basically reserve the negative space that I wanted in the final mask. It's a little difficult to explain. Even though I'm gonna be attaching it to a mask and it should hold just fine, I wanted to make the prosthetic as light as possible. And I also wanted to make sure that we weren't making it actually hard to breathe in. So if you leave this space, open inside the prosthetic, then one, you take away all the weight of that being one gigantic solid piece, and you also then would get airflow into your nose. I am happy to say that this theory ended up working and I can breathe just fine through the prosthetic now. So I don't wanna hear that you can't breathe through it. I had an entire other idea for a mask and then I realized that it involved covering the entire thing in latex and you wouldn't have been able to breathe in any case, so. I thought this through a little bit, just a little bit though. Now I'm using am I orange? And we're sculpting this into two different pieces. So I made space for the inside of the upper piece and the lower chin piece. Then I did a good old cotton and latex sculpt right on top of that. Grease your stuff up with Vaseline or petroleum jelly. And by stuff, I mean your clay. It's so hard for me to talk and do makeup at the same time. Which by the way, if you're wondering where the JonBenet video is that I keep saying is coming next, it is coming next. Every single time I find a new piece of information, I go down brand new rabbit holes and then I need to fact check every single element of that. I want it to be the most complete picture possible, but I didn't want to miss several weeks of video. So I was like, I'll just do this fun, fast, cute little idea where I make like a little mask that's 3D and like a monster. I can do that in like one or two days and then edit it in one or two days. And here we are a week later. This mask thing will take you several days if you decide to do it because this mask thing took me several days to do. Oh, and I brought up that video because I was planning on doing a glam and gossip, which by the way, we're renaming to Armchair Detective because that's what you guys voted for on Instagram and I kind of like that better too. I was going to do the JonBenet video as part of that series and I still will, but I don't think I can do my makeup at the same time as that because as you can see, I'm struggling to get out any words right now and all I'm trying to explain is something that I've done a million times on this channel. Imagine me trying to talk about one of the most complicated unsolved mysteries of our time in which I have so many pages of notes on, it's gonna be impossible. So I'm just gonna have to talk about that one at the same time. Sorry. But that's the next one I'm working on. And as soon as I'm done filming this, I'm getting back to work on that. It's gonna be a monster of a video. So I hope you guys are ready for the longest video I've probably ever put up. You better watch it. Just kidding. You don't have to. Pink! Anyway, like I was saying, I used cotton and latex to sculpt the beginnings of my two pieces directly onto that. If you want a thorough reminder, you can go watch my Yeti video, but if you'd like the quick summary reminder, I lay down a layer of latex first on top of the clay, and that's to like wet the surface and make it adhesive, basically. Then unroll a cotton ball, lay it down on top of that wet latex, and then douse it in more latex. And once it's pretty thoroughly soaked through, you'll be able to manipulate it quite a bit, get it into the shape that you want. And for starters, all I did was just build a piece across the top, all the way over to the edge of my life cast, which you'll see later I had to extend once that was dry because it didn't go to the ends of my face enough, and a bottom strap. And I built out the chin so that it was a little bit 
menacing. And then I started to add teeth while the cotton and latex was still wet because I kind of wanted the places for the teeth to already be there. Even if the teeth didn't stay and dry in my sculpt, they're really hard to glue on after the fact, so you wanna try to stick them in first. If you need a refresher with teeth, I made them from polymorph plastic, which are little plastic pellets that you can mold in boiling water, and then you can shape them into whatever you want. It's really fun. I made those first so that when the sculpt was still wet, I could just pop them right in. Going to use Flavor Town to deepen this pink corner, and then blending it out again with the fluffy brush that I used for the pink. Now, a tip for the teeth, they take a long time to kind of finagle into the right spot, depending on how deep your mold is, because I did that like empty space with the clay in the beginning. It wasn't as deep as normally it has been in the past. That's what she said. And I had to kind of really like reinforce them with extra cotton and latex. I do this in the Eddie tutorial too. I dip the tooth in the latex. I put more cotton around the tip of it. I dip that in the latex and then I stick it in there. That's also what she said. I'm using Rusted from James's palette to deepen this orange a little bit too. I ended up using some of your kidding as well. And then I'm gonna blend that back out with the orange fluffer. By the way, this is just a mirror. Everyone in the last video thought that it was a, a secret makeup palette with my name on it, but no, it's, it's just a mirror that they sent to me. It's just personalized, that's all. Love the conspiracy theories though. Keep them coming. Once all the teeth were dry and set and in their place, and once you're happy with the sculpt and you let it dry overnight preferably, you're ready to paint. I thought about painting mine a realistic, creepy color. I thought about painting it with my foundation color so that it seemed like it blended into my skin. But I also realized that it was gonna be so thick that it was never gonna look like it was sitting directly on my face and that's okay, it's not supposed to because it's a mask. So I wanted it to be very obviously not a part of my face. I surveyed a few friends by showing them the sculpt and I got dinosaur, dinosaur, and alligator, which also made me want to not paint it a more natural monster color because I was actually leaning towards like an army green and then it would have really looked like a dinosaur or alligator. So instead I decided I wanted to make this like a mutant, snuggly, adorable little monster that's pink and fuzzy. So I have a pink feather boa. But first you gotta paint it pink. So I used a combination of just three colors. I only used white, this fluorescent pink, which is actually an airbrush color, but I just used it straight out the bottle because I already had my teeth in and I didn't want to spray my teeth, so I couldn't use the airbrush. And I used a fluorescent orange, just a little bit at the end. Technically, I guess I used four. I used a black too, but not for much. I basically painted the center of the sculpt white. I mixed it with some of the pink for like a baby pink color to blend. <laughs> The brain fog is real lately. <laughs> to fade into a fluorescent pink on the outsides of our prosthetic. Then I added black to the inside of the nose and I used that black to also splatter a little bit of texture around the entire prosthetic. I'm using Cafe Disco in the inner corners of the eyes right now, by the way. And then I used the fluorescent orange at the very end to kind of bring the entire thing a little bit warmer to match my boa feathers. They were kind of like a warmer pink and it was starting to get a little cooler tone because I mixed it with the white. And I kind of just splotched that all over with a chip brush and a sponge. Then I used a mix of the fluorescent pink and the fluorescent orange to coat the top of each tooth and I thinned it out with water to give it that kind of pulled gradient. Then once I have everything painted, I took it outside and I sprayed it really quickly with like a little bit of a gloss coat to seal in the paint because I knew that I was gonna be pressing it and touching it a lot to get it attached to the mask and I didn't want the paint to rub off. I liked that it was a little bit shiny, that was pretty cute. And Christine, bless her soul, knows that I rarely paint my nails and yet she will still send me her nail polish, which I am very grateful for. And I finally put it to good use. I used her super glossy taco on the teeth to make them super slick and shiny and juicy looking. Thanks, Christine. Then, and this is probably the worst part, similar to glitter, similar to white fur, I glued on the pink feathers painstakingly one by one towards the outside. I didn't want to make it any more bulky than it already was, so instead of adding it all over, I just tried to add it to like the front third of the face. And I spent a lot of time trying to pick out the exact right feather because it needed to like lay in a certain way that it was gonna be easy to glue on then with Prose-Aid. 
And then uh, that turned out to be a very long, arduous process. So get comfy when you're doing this, if you do this. You're probably not gonna do this. But you should do this, at least once, cause it could scare small children in the grocery store. Adding a little bit of extra white pretty stuff to the inner corner of my eyeballs. Oh God, that stings. Why do they make it sting? Frick. Ooh, pretty. Oh, 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 oh. I finished explaining how to make this mask too early. That's pretty much it. That's the whole thing. Except one very cool part that I'm gonna make you wait for until the end. Otherwise I have nothing, nothing to keep you here except the rest of what's happening on my face, which I guess could be a video in its own right. Sure, but I'm putting Flavor Town in the outer third of my eye. I might darken it still, but for now, this is what I want. Pretty. And now for the world's fastest eyeliner. I can't rob you of the experience of taking off the tape. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, so Oops. Okay, that one sounds a little funky, but we'll fix it. Still satisfying. Still very satisfying. Are you amazed? Yes. Oh, I gotta do my lower liner still. I'm not my lower liner. I have to do my lower eyeshadow too. <laughs> Where's your mouth? Where's my mouth? Yeah. Here. Wow, I really should have taken my time explaining this mask. I really should have spread it out amongst my steps in my glam, but I didn't. All right, lower eyeshadow. Let's just keep speeding through. Let's get it over with. Mascara. Ow, I hit my head. Let's try it again. I just want my face to get creepier and creepier after each snap. I'm gonna fix my liner, which I think could be a gigantic mistake, but we're gonna do it anyway, cause I can't help myself. I don't like the shape that it is. And then we're gonna go straight into lashes. The rest of the face is less important, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because some people get to see me without my mask on. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't love that smile? Just one? <laughs> you didn't sound so sure that time. Do you wanna rethink your response? Uh-huh, yes ma'am. Oh, she wanted to embrace the shiny, but she didn't want to do it to that degree. <laughs> oh no, that was a mistake. Too much, too much. I just want to look glowy and happy through too much highlight. Good girl. Is that even my good girl or is that a good boy? No, that's my good boy. Hi, good boy. Go be cute. Oh, oh, no, oh. no, no. How the hell did he do that? That takes like some major gymnastics. <laughs> Wait, what is that? It's your audio kit. Okay, hello, we're back. Creature, you gotta come here now, buddy. Oh, bub. Oh, bub. Yes. Mmm. You're so big. You weigh the most. Here, take over the channel for me. I'm just gonna do lip liner. Okay. That's my face, that's my face, and now I'm gonna hide half of it. I like that. It's time for the final reveal, even though you saw most of it already, of my monster mask. Hush. So that's the look. Truly glam and gore. So this is where my life cast ended and I had to add some more cotton and latex to extend it to my ears. So as soon as I finished this and I put it on, I realized that I look like a mutant version of the Breaking Bad teddy bear. You know what I'm talking about? That's me. Also, it reminds me of Five Nights at Freddy's, but I don't know why, because I've never played that game and I, I don't know anyone in it. Who does this remind you of? Who am I? What am I? I'm not an alligator, I'll tell you that. Maybe I'm a pink dinosaur, but not with these ears. Ha <laughs> ha. I beat the system. I'm a bear, duh. And then the best part, one, I can breathe just fine. I held up the pieces to my mask as I was making the prosthetic to make sure that it wouldn't impact my breathing and it very, very slightly changed the amount of oxygen I could get. I could tell that there was something on my face, but it wasn't any harder to breathe. So that's pretty great considering there's a lot on my face. Two, it's Velcroed on. Ta -da! Check it out. I hot glued pieces of Velcro on the back of this mask, anywhere it made contact, and some places it didn't make contact. Like I got a chin strap, like a literal chin strap of Velcro across my chin. I held on by several pieces underneath, and then there's several pieces on the black mask. So when it gets dirty and grimy and gross, cause you're gross, you can literally just peel it off and pop it in the wash. The mask, don't wash this, do not recommend. See look, I wouldn't lie to you. Ta-da! 
This mask that I'm wearing, the base of this, is from one of those masks that come in like the 10 pack. They're super inexpensive. They're pretty much everywhere in those little plastic bags. And this was actually a great mask to use because it's so tight on the first slit for the ears. It helps keep the weight of this on without any issues. I, I love it. That's this week's video. Thanks for watching. Please wear a mask. Please, 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 for the love of God, wear a mask. It's a very, very small thing you can do. I mean like really, very small, like yay big that can help a ton. You can literally save someone's life by wearing a mask, so please, always wear a mask if you are around anyone or anything that is not within the comfort of your own home. And if you wanna make it a little extra fun, try making your own mask and tag me on Twitter or Instagram so I can see it. That's it, that's all I got to say. I'm a little late in the video. I really am gonna start doing this in the beginning, but my name is Mikey, but spelled funny, M-Y-K-I-E. I will see you next week. Hopefully with the JonBenet video, and if not, another video so that I can work more on the JonBenet video. <laughs> Mikey Monster out. Bye. Hush. <laughs> oh, should I play the audio? Oh yeah, do it. <laughs> He's so bored.